Well, that's that's how he fight. You know, he's normally used to, you know, coming forward, staying toe to toe with people and breaking their will, and that's how he get most of his knockouts. You know, trading with guys. On the other day, you said you wanted to come in here. For sure, for sure. I had a little ring rust uh, in the beginning of the couple of rounds, you know, but after, you know, I set in, settled down, you know, I felt like everything was, you know, going my way like I like like it was planned. What changed for you a little bit in the fourth round uh, toward the end of it? You started getting a little more in. Could you feel the energy of the crowd carrying you a little bit there too at the end of the fourth? Well, yeah, but like I always say, you know, uh, the crowd is a is a blessing, but at the same time, the the crowd can be a curse. So, you know, um, I try not to get too caught up in the crowd. You know, I try to just focus on the task at hand. What were you starting to see different toward the end of the fourth round that you could maybe attack and get in there a little more? Because it just seemed to build until that last, that last shot. Well, I was breaking them down with the body shots, you know, the stab to the body, the hooks to the body. So, you know, I knew um, I was breaking them down. You know, and I knew it would be, you know, a short night when I catch him to the head. Is there a good message for the, for the boxing community about how Muhammad will show up? Well, I think, I think everybody know that. You know, when you look at the, uh, the history of me fighting in Omaha, it's always a big crowd, you know. So I don't think um, this is the biggest crowd, I would say, you know, over what? 14,000, 13, 14,000. So, you know, um, they really came out uh, to see this. They really came out to see this, so. How does it feel just get this one out of the way and, and over with after being on for a year and, and proving that you still got it and you still on top? Is it that's, you know, that's, that's what I wanted. You know, like I said, I always, I kept saying that I wanted to fight this year. You know, I don't want to be out the ring for over a year. You know, and, you know, that's what I'm trying to get back to is fighting on a, a constant basis. Can you take us through the end of the sixth round there where you got to him? What did you see? What, how did you know that was going to work? Just talk us through those last few seconds before you dropped him. Well, like I told you before, you know, I was touching him to the body. You know, I seen that that was having an effect on him. You know, um, he had a high guard, you know, and I started uh, picking up the pace. Uh, more punches and bunches, and you know, I seen the opening, and I took it, and you know, the rest is history. You mentioned you're a free agent. Where, where does this, where does this free agency go now? Wherever the sky take me, you know, I can, I'm willing, able to do business with whoever, you know, uh, be okay. You know, they was, they was, kind enough and blessed me with the opportunity of bringing another fight back to Omaha, Nebraska, and I appreciate them for that. And, you know, who knows if uh, they they bring me another uh, offer or something that me and my team agree upon, you know, of course, you know, we're going to entertain it. If uh, other fighters in the welterweight division is free and we can do business and it makes sense, then that's what we're going to do. You mentioned picking your spots in the fight, but I'm guessing at this point in your career you're picking the spots as to who you want to fight. Is there is there a message you want to give to, to Spence? Well, I don't got to give no message to nobody. Everybody everybody see what I've done in the welterweight division. Everybody see who I've been calling out. Everybody know what Terrence Crawford brings to the table. So it's not, you know, too much of anything that I need to do. Yeah. Well, do you think that this may be the last time you do this in Omaha? Uh, and if it was, what do you hope the people saw tonight? Well, it may be the last time Omaha see me fighting, you know, and I, like I said, I hope that they came out, they enjoyed themselves, you know, everybody had a great time, everybody make it home safe, and uh, I just want them to know that, you know, I appreciate them for all the support that they've been giving me ever since the amateur days. Hey, Crawford, you know, you've had a lot of tremendous knockouts, you've been on this knockout spree. Where would you rank this particular knockout out of, in your career? Well, it's up there, you know, um, I had, I had a lot of you know, spectacular knockouts earlier in my career, you know, um, but this is this is top five. Mm -hmm. and, and my other, you know, I know you're a gentleman in the sport and luckily Spence is okay. You know, I don't know if you heard that he, he got in an accident, but he's okay. He went out uh, and he like positive, nice words or things. Just 
you know, the things like that. Kind of well, I never, I never uh, heard that he got another yeah. another accident. Yeah. You know, I wish him. Yeah, yeah, a fourteen year old kid allegedly got in a vehicle and it wasn't at his fault. And luckily, everyone is okay to come on. Well, I wish him well. You know, I hope he's all right. You know, mentally, physically, and emotionally. You know, uh, like I said before, you know, he got a family, he got a feed, and you know, um, this is just a sport. You know, we all, you know, uh, fighting for that number one spot. So it ain't personal; it's just business. Absolutely. But, but I, uh, ideally, what's the timetable for your next? Time? I mean, 13 months is kind of probably a little longer than you'd like. I'm guessing, maybe not. But what would be a uh, hopefully, hopefully somewhere in April, May, you know, um, yeah, around that time. I'm going to go on a little vacation, enjoy myself. But uh, congratulations on the win. Uh, obviously looking forward, if, if the Spence deal comes back went into negotiations and it is the same, should we maybe expect something similar to this, maybe like a top 10 guy in, 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 a, in a case where you got to kind of showcase your skills? Uh, well, we got to, we got to, we got to wait and see. You know, we can't we can't overstep our boundaries. We don't know what is next, you know, so we just, you know, got to go to the drawing board and my phone stay on and, you know, we ready for whoever. If if they come back and, you know, maybe it isn't Spence because of the, that deal has to, you know, whatever is different. Do you think the Jermel negotiations for, because uh, I know you and Jermel have been kind of going back and forth. Do you think a Jermel Charlo negotiation will go different than they all spent on the kind of same people. I don't know. I don't know. You know, I don't know. I can't speak for nobody else. I only can speak for myself. Two more questions over here. Um, for you, and maybe Coach Bomack could uh, answer this as well, is there a timetable uh, for you in terms of weight division? If, like, you can't get the Spence fight during a certain time, there's a timetable where you're, you're going to go ahead and, and try to move up? Y'all ready now? Cause I'm tired of 47. <laughs> nah, <laughs> nah. nah uh, I don't know. You know, uh, you know. Uh, I feel like I can compete at 154. I feel like I'll be strong at 154 as well as 147. You know, uh, a lot of people say I'm small for 147. You know, but I just feel like you know, with my strength and my skills and my. Uh, my my mindset that you know I can go up and wait and and hang with the best of them. One last one. Can I get a comment of Womack? Yeah. Who's the question? Uh, do we got a time time <laughs> frame when I want to move up to one fifty four? No, not really. <clears throat> he, he made forty seven pretty pretty easy. Well, he make he made it look easy. You know what I'm saying? So. Uh, <laughs> But I, I forget the man could do basically anything you want to do at 47 or 54. I mean, he's proven to the world that he is the pound for pound best. So if he chooses to go up to 54 for one fight, then come back down for 47, so let it be. That's what he want to do. And I, I don't think, me personally, I don't think nobody at 54 or 47 could beat him. It's as simple as that. It, the, the only question is who's going to be willing to fight him? You don't see nobody calling out Bud. 54 or 47. So you're going to probably try to stall him out. Probably move down to 35 and fight Shakur Stevenson. (laughs) 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 All right, uh, Chris Ramsey. So that mindset you had mentioned earlier, um, if there was something you could share to those who are looking to grow up, and then be in a, like a higher elevation area compared to where they may see their parents, especially here in Omaha. What was something from your mindset, your life, you could share with those trying to grow up in a better position? Well, I would just tell them, you know, never take no for an answer. Always work hard for, you know, towards their dreams and goals and, you know, um, just be hungry about everything about it, you know, and, you know, just never quit, you know, because, me coming up, I had uh, so many doubters, but that fueled me. You know, uh, you can't make it from Omaha. You got to go to Vegas or you got to go to California. You got to go to a boxing town, you know, boxing in, in Omaha, Nebraska. You know, uh, I didn't hurt at all. I had managers try to take me away from Omaha from the start. 
you know. And I looked at Bo and I said, man, we're going we're gonna to make it from here, you know. And that's what we did because we set our mind to it. We had a goal. We had a mission. And, you know, we stick to it, the game plan. Thank you. Yeah. All right, thanks, guys. Thank you.